This is the most fragile and delicate part of your scale model. On top of that, it is very hard to replace. And still, in my previous canopy masking tutorials, many people commented that the best and easiest way to mask your canopy is to directly cut the masking tape on the plastic. In this video, I'm going to show you why I think this is wrong. I'm going to show you how to do it if you really want to do it that way. And then I'm going to give you an alternative option for easy and fast masking with good results and no risk for damage. Before we start masking, I would like to present you the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for you to choose from and develop new skills, hone your existing arsenal or just explore for something new to capture your imagination. On the platform you can find everything from photography and web development to business analytics and productivity classes. My personal favorite so far is the fundamentals of DSLR photography by Justin Bridges. The way that he explains how to balance the exposure triangle is super easy to understand and I'm sure this class will help me to improve the quality of my scale modeling photography. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Now let's get back to the masking. Here I have some Tamiya masking tape which is wide enough to cover the part I want to mask. The next task is to place the tape into position and then burnish it down using very little force so I don't crack the canopy. A Q-tip is a good choice of tool for the burnishing of the wider areas. I'm going to work my way from one side of the window to the other. This way it will be easier to avoid air bubbles or wrinkles. And here comes one of the downsides of this method. When it comes to masking complex surfaces, a single piece of tape cannot conform perfectly. It just can't and wrinkles or lifting are pretty much impossible to avoid, which can lead to paint bleeding underneath the tape. If you don't believe me, check out any aftermarket canopy masking set. They never come with one big piece of mask for the larger and more complex areas. They are multi-piece deal and usually have cutouts that you have to fill with masking liquid. When you finish watching this video, please let me know in the comments below if you agree with me or you disagree. To burnish down the corners, I will use a toothpick. Again, due to the limitations of the masking tape, it is very easy to tear it while burnishing down the edges. And here comes another downside. If the frames of your canopy are not sharp and well pronounced, you simply cannot use this method, which means that there is no way that you can mask the interior of the canopy with this technique. Anyhow, burnishing down the edges, I can already see some wrinkles, despite the fact that this part is not that complex. Before you put your hobby blade on your clear part and start cutting, I suggest to lay down some guidelines to get a better idea what track your blade should follow. A sharp pencil is a good choice. I have seen many people using flashlights under the canopy so they can see the frames better, but I personally just get blinded by the light. Now let's start cutting the tape. Obviously here we need a brand new blade. Remember that using this technique you have only one go at getting a clean cut. You should not put too much pressure to avoid cracking the part and also leaving too big of a mark. On the other hand, the pressure should be enough for the blade to go through the tape on the first pass. Every wrong move here will result in a catastrophic failure. Alright. I managed to cut the tape without issues this time. 
and although I'm not going to use this canopy, I'm not going to intentionally ruin it just to prove my point. Nevertheless, inflicting damage is a very real possibility. So I think that this method is best avoided. Now let me show you another option that is just as easy and fast, but carries no real danger with it. This is a liquid mask from Abteilung. I have no affiliation with the brand, but in my experience this is the best masking liquid on the market. So this is my alternative to the previous method. First I'm going to give it a good shake as there is some sedimentation on the bottom. And then I'm going to decant it in this container. We are also going to need a cup of water and a fine brush. Since the masking liquid is a fluid, capillary action will help us with the application. All we need to do is get close enough to the edge and the fluid will do the rest of the job. As you can see I have some surface tension issues, which might be caused by the fact that I did not clean the part with soapy water, or simply because the clear part is super smooth. Anyways. With a little persistence the issue will be resolved. Like the previous technique, here we need to have prominent and sharp frames. The masking liquid needs time to cure, so this might be perceived as a disadvantage. Frequent brush cleaning with water is necessary because otherwise the mask will dry on the brush and will be much harder to remove. In my experience, a stone works for removing dried masking liquid from the brush. Now the exterior part of the canopy is masked. It took me about 10 minutes for each side. Now let's apply some paint and examine the results. After the paint is laid down, the problems start to become evident. Here obviously I was not able to precisely follow the frames. And I assure you that I did not do that on purpose. But since there is only one shot at getting things right, it will have to stay like this. Of course, you can try and remove the excess paint, but the marks left by the blades are there to stay. Removing the masks is pretty straightforward. Lift and peel type of action for the tape side. For the masking fluid, I use toothpick to get it started and then remove the rest with my finger. While things look ok from the distance, when you get close to the detail, the issues are visible with both techniques. The masking fluid fails at creating crisp edges both because of unevenness due to application and inability to cleanly cut the paint on removal. And I already outlined the disadvantages of cutting the tape directly on the canopy. That's why I strongly recommend my other masking tutorials, where if you want the job to be done with precision, you can learn how to do it. Hope that this video has been useful for you. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy modeling!